it. So um, I realize I didn't introduce the piece or say who it's by. It's called uh, Spectral, uh, Spectral Canon or Common Lampar, and it's by uh, James Chen. So yeah, very, very shaky, obviously, audio and vid video-wise, but I think it's kind of suited it, so... Um, so, um, Channing made this piece around about 1974. Um, he had been uh, instrumental, really, in bringing Common Man to the uh, attention of the world. Uh, he wrote... So I said, I'm suddenly very moved, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, he wrote some very detailed liner notes uh, in the initial release of uh, Nankaro's studies. And he made this piece and dedicated to, to, to Nankaro. And Nankaro himself punched every one of those holes, uh, of which there are uh, almost 9,000. 9, um, <clears throat> so it's based on an effectively simple idea. Um, this is just a, you know, an illustration of it. Um, Henry Cowell's uh, uh, rhythmicon idea where you have the you, you relate rhythmic frequency to pitch frequency frequency of, of um, to audio frequency so if you're working with a harmonic series which Jim does a lot um, so then spectral can the, tune, the piano is retuned to the first 24 parts of a harmonic series um, it means you can have a very simple relationship between each of the partials so this is the octave, the, the, the bass note, C. The octave, the second partial. If you have a pulsing thing, if this happens twice as fast, this happens three times as fast, it's the third partial, etc., and it goes on. So it makes, um, it's kind of, a, it's the sort of thing that you, that anybody might come up with, really, if you were interested in relating frequency to, to rhythm. And uh, actually, I thought I invented it as well. In, in 1995, I was very, very excited about it. It was a real breakthrough moment for me, inventing something that was, uh, I, later, I was eight years old. But um, this is uh, my one, I think. Oh, okay. The resize isn't really working, but you can, you can kind of see it. Uh, you see how it's just 32 pictures. But can you see these parabolas already starting to occur as, as now, in Jim's piece there, you only really hear them start to kick in towards the end. Um, you know, obviously at the beginning, it's a very, very simple relationship. It's almost uh, classical in a kind of accompaniment and more detail on top sort of a way. But these problems really do kick in toward the end. And I made this piece uh, when I was living in his house and still hadn't worked out that he'd been working with it for ages. And I feverishly wrote to Anya, no telling her how exciting this is going to be for the world of music. Um, but this, it, it actually is it's really, really loaded with potential. This, this is just a, um, a screen grab from whatever ancient software I was using. It was uh, probably Vision. I don't know if you remember Vision from the early 90s. But, um, and this just lays it out. There basically are 32 pitches. I was able to use 32 pitches because I had my own Proteus Emu. And I was able to borrow it at school in Proteus Emu. And I gave me 32 pitches that I could tune using sense, or what they call sense, they were really just plugging the 64 instead of plugging the 32. Uh, and it was made with just, uh, just pure sine tones and very, very soft attack, meaning that when it started off, it just sounds like a big old sawtooth wave, like really, you know, like that. But then the, the idea is you gradually, as you go in, you, as you go along, like in real time, remove these things, bit by bit, finishing with the fundamental. And it really exposes the, the potential in this set of relationships. You end up with patterns that are, uh, you know, things which are like classical, classical, as in, you know, the lower part of it is almost arpeggiated, or it is arpeggiated, and the upper parts are really going for it. Um, so it's almost like it's a complement. You also get these uh, really beautiful call response things or contrapuntal things uh, occurring. Um, and, uh, you know, ultimately, it has this sense of classical form because it's constantly resolving. Because, you know, the 5-1 is always there. At some point, you're always going to get a 5-1 cadence. I think I was looping this around about 40 to 45 seconds. So, 
and I'm working through that process, which I did for a very, very long time. And my supervisor fell asleep during it and said that, that was a compliment. Um, so, anyway, I, I, I made this and I called it Parati, uh, which is Parabolas for Jim, and I, you know, told him about it and he was like, yeah. However, I then went on and made it another one which I still really like, um, and I'll play you a little bit of it. This, uh, Um, so this is something that this uses the same kind of pro oh please that's for work I imported these for work department. it's not my actual place. Um, so this so I did the same thing for 128 voices because I was you know max MSP came out and I didn't have to rely on MIDI. So I was able to use 128 partials and the piece begins using um, where there's the probability is also related to the probability of sounding is also related to the uh, partial. So the 128 partial has a 128 to 1 chance of sounding in the first cycle, and as you go on, you reduce this. And anyway, uh, and, and on the way, I had to tweak it a little bit at the end because it was at the bottom and didn't play all the time. Uh, so I'll play you a little bit of it. I hope. So at this point, you probably can sense that there's a structure there, but you probably can't hear what it is underlying. But you, there are these relationships starting to come out, almost like the complements. Uh, okay.
hear in the lower frequency the suggestion of classical functional harmony, suspension and then transmission with this 5 1 relationship or the, the tree. With more of a likelihood that there's some simultaneous soundings of pitches that coincide. building up this big solid tonic sort of a chord. Relationships which are straightforwardly um, numerically related to the frequency of the of the of, of, of the partial. Uh, okay. Um, so so I'm not sure what kind of it, it, is that too musical or do people kind of get? Okay, that's too. <laughs> okay. Well. I'll do that. simple thing that I was doing, that's the, like I say, the kind of rhythmicon, Henry Cowell sort of thing. Henry Cowell worked with um, theremin, like that's the theremin guy, to build a, a rhythmicon machine that would make, allow you to make music using those relationships. Um, obviously it didn't work for those kind of numbers. Um, but you can see here, I've just um, generated some, like the kind of shape of the opening of the original, and you can still see how it starts to shape up, right? The... So you can, you, you can sort of see them build up. This is in the, in the, in the original version. And so, I, I played that, which that you just heard for Jim, and... Um, he was very un underwhelmed. He, he, he didn't like it. And the reason he didn't like it is he thought it was too attenuated. The, the, the cycle was too long. It was about two minutes. And it takes a long time before you start to hear any re relationships that you can get a hold on, even if, like him, you understand this stuff you know, inside out. You've been working on it for, for a long time. So he, because a very, very important thing to Jim was that music, if you're going to work with process music, it must be a perceptible process. Okay. You might need to know some stuff to be able to receive it, but you, you need to be able to make it sort of perceptible. And he worked with um, Steve Reich on the original piano phase when it was a four, hand, four piano version, uh, and you know he's really really tied into that. So all of his pieces, like I think you can get from that from that special piano he played at the start, is all of that. It's a, yes, it's a, it's a it may be an involved process, but it, it is on the face of it understandable to someone that doesn't necessarily have a lot of, uh, you know, had to spend a lot of time trying to learn that kind of stuff. But that was very, very important. Um, his most uh, famous piece, I think, is uh, Critical Band, which is a piece that I heard. I don't know if anybody's heard that. I have it queued up to play a little bit of it, but 